All right, folks, so welcome to what is supposed to be your 6D notes. Okay, so this is Roman expansion. So last time we talked about the Roman Republic and kind of the way the government was set up, kind of patricians, plebeians, how they all had to do military service. And kind of one of the things that Rome is famous for is creating this humongous empire. Okay, so how they did it, they didn't just do it by, you know, being nice to everybody and, you know, just people let them have their land. They went out and took it. Okay, so they ex expanded. They fought in military campaigns, battles, and over time, they eventually controlled all of the Mediterranean Peninsula. So we're going to talk about kind of how that started. All right. So by 265 BCE, Rome had kind of conquered all of Italy. Okay, they had the strongest military. Okay, they kind of controlled things. They got other city-states to kind of, you know, bow down and, you know, pay tribute to them. Okay, and the Romans were tolerant towards these defeated enemies, okay, in their territories. So they would say, hey, little city up here in Italy, or little city down here in Italy, you can kind of keep your leaders and all that stuff, and if you want to be Roman, that's fine, but you have to pay tribute to us and say we're kind of the boss of you. And most people did because they knew the military would crush them. Okay, so this is that idea of tolerance. Again, another theme of the course. Okay, so what ends up happening is there's one city-state, and that uh, city-state's name is Carthage. Okay, and this city-state, they don't play along with the game that Rome is trying to play. So they say, you know what, we're not going to pay you tribute. Okay, we're going to be your competitor. Okay, so Rome kind of controlled trade in Italy. They had all kinds of trade routes in the sea. And then Carthage was actually a huge and powerful city-state in itself, okay? And they had huge trade areas, okay? They were trading with the eastern Mediterranean, Africa, okay, Spain, and they were growing pretty powerful. So kind of the competition over trade and kind of actually some competition in this island of Sicily, okay, Rome and Carthage kind of battle it out. So these are kind of like the two, kind of like the two heavyweight fighters of the ancient world. Okay, Rome versus Carthage, and eventually, this competition and kind of anxiety over who's going to be in control leads to a war, and it's called the Punic War. So this war has three parts. Okay, the first part: Romans and the Carthaginians kind of battle out over this island of Sicily. Okay, so again. If Rome and Italy, this is kind of the boot, this little ball that it's kicking would be the island of Sicily. Okay, so Carthage and Rome are going to fight it out over Sicily. Rome wins. Now, after that first Punic War, Rome kind of does its tolerance thing. They say, hey, if you want to, you know, keep being Carthage, and, you know, that's fine, but you have to pay us a lot of money. You have to make sure that we totally control this island now. You can't have any part of the trade there, and you kind of got to keep to yourself. But otherwise, we'll let you continue to exist. Okay, so they try the tolerance strategy at first. But years later, okay, the second part of this Punic War happens. Okay, and that second part is this guy named Hannibal. Okay, and he is kind of a famous general, and he's kind of a general for Carthage. Okay, so he's a Carthaginian general, and he invades the Italian peninsula. Okay, so years later, kind of there's resentment in Car Carthage towards Rome. There's kind of bad feelings. And they, they just don't like Rome. Okay, so the Hannibal ends up invading the Italian peninsula. All right, so let's take a look at what, what he does here. All right, so Hannibal. Okay, so he's going to basically get into okay, what we would call Italy. Um, and he's going to go... Th from Carthage, okay, he's going to end up fighting in Spain a little bit, and he's going to control some territories here. He's going to go all the way through the Alps, okay, which is a ridiculous thing to do, and he's going to start wreaking havoc in Rome. Okay, he's a powerful general, he's a smart military guy, and he has a big army, okay, and he's going to go through the Alps, remember the Alps are the mountain range, okay, that nobody thought people could go through. He goes through the Alps, into Italy, and he starts kind of, um, you know, wreaking havoc. All right, so this might be 
something like what his army would have looked like. Okay, so he actually had elephants, okay, and he would put these on the front lines, and these elephants would just mow guys down, okay? So one of the first times we see elephants used in battle successfully is by Hannibal. Okay, so Hannibal does that. This is all part of that Second Punic War. Okay, and eventually what's going to happen is that he will defeat the Romans. I don't think we specifically have to know that, but know this, but it's kind of interesting. At the Battle of Cannae, he uh, destroys the Roman army there. He actually kind of completely circles them. So the Romans are in red and the Carthaginians are in blue. So he like uses this kind of cool military tactic, which we'll talk about more in class, but he ends up totally circling the Roman army and defeating them. And this is one of like the great military battles of all time. So people that are into the military kind of like study this battle and are pretty into it. All right, so the bottom line is Hannibal goes, he kind of uh, does a lot of damage to Rome, but he doesn't like deliver the death blow. So what ends up happening is the third part of the war is that kind of the Romans, they don't want to fight Hannibal anymore because they know Hannibal keeps beating them. So they, they go in Africa, right where Carthage's you know, hometown is, and they start kind of attacking them there. So Hannibal has to kind of go back to Africa now, and then the Romans kind of defeat him there. This guy Scipio Africanus defeats him. All right, so once this series of wars, we call them the Punic Wars, is over, okay, because Rome gave tolerance to Carthage, but now Rome felt that they kind of abused that tolerance, the Romans completely destroy Carthage. Okay, so like this is what Carthage looks like right now. Like it doesn't exist anymore. They burned the whole city down. Okay, they killed all the people in it, and they just totally wiped it out. Okay, so the Romans wipe out Carthage, and now they have kind of all that territory that Carthage had, and it's a good opportunity for the expansion of trade and wealth for Rome. So the end result of the Punic Wars, Rome obviously wins. Carthage totally destroyed, and then more wealth, more trade for Rome. Okay, and then that's kind of the first part of this expansion. So they beat Carthage. Now they control the Western Mediterranean. They're going to go into Africa. Okay, they're going to go into Asia. They're going to go into Europe. They're going to go into the Hellenistic world. Okay, and they're going to go even into Gaul and the British Isles. Okay, so here's Rome. Here's Carthage. Okay, once, once Rome has um, Carthage, okay, that gives them control of all of Spain. Okay, that gives them control of the sea, the trade routes. Okay, in Italy, and then they're just going to keep going, and they're going to spread and conquer everything. All right, so that's 60, first part of your 6D and 6E notes. So go ahead and watch 6E now.